What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a hotly awaited title that got funded on Kickstarter called The Crust. If this video is up, it means that the embargo is down and we can finally check it out and play around with the title. And we're going to do that for about the next 30 minutes. This is a moon colonization game where a bunch of corporations have gone to the moon and the game has itself marketed as existing somewhere in between Factorio and also RimWorld, which I think is a pretty lofty claim. I played around with the game for about an hour prior to this. I played in the sandbox mode for like an hour and I played in the storyline mode for about an hour just to play around with different things and see where the different dots and tittles were at, and so far, I have not hated the game. And that's actually a good thing, because I really tend to dislike automation games. But today, we are going to dive straight on into the title, take a look at it for about 30 minutes. Fair warning, there will probably be some editing and other stuff that takes place here, because this game is pretty slow-paced on the front end, and we're gonna have to get- we're gonna have to, like, get through the beginning portion of the game. So, pretty strong chance that I'm gonna be ending up doing some some editing throughout this video but if you wanted to check the game out I got a link for you down below in the description I think my first impressions are mostly positive for right now I haven't run into anything too egregious that like drove me crazy or anything so far but this is mostly just going to be a first impressions video so we are landing on the moon right now and what is our goal well eventually our goal is to actually fully planet base this place up and have human beings running around that are doing research and all that kind of stuff we can do expeditions I hate that menu right there if I take you on back out we've got a big old chunk of planet to explore uh, we can go to these little locations and we can investigate them and have little adventures and stuff like that I really really like this area right here this looks really good like this moon model right here looks great but for right now we need to set up the basics and in setting up the basics we're getting the power grid set up because we have this elevator that takes us down to a lower layer where we're gonna be doing I hesitate to say this because people are gonna jump all over this, but like Dungeon Keeper style digging. It's got like little voxels. You dig them on out to go find stuff. I don't know if there's bad guys or anything beneath the soil. I haven't ran into them yet, but either way, there's a top layer, there's a bottom layer, and there's a space layer to the game. And so it seems to have a lot of features that I haven't quite had time to get to as of right now. But I figured we'd take it from the top and we'd work our way on through. We'd start mining, we get some things set up, and hopefully that'll be enough for you to decide whether or not this is the kind of game that you wanted to get for yourself. As I previously mentioned, link is down below, along with like my Twitch stream and all that kind of stuff. Won't be streaming it on the day this video goes live, because I don't stream on that day of the week, but I may stream it the next day or something. I don't know. But let's get on in here. So as I mentioned, this is a moon colonization game, a game in which you are responsible with your corporate benefactor for getting to the moon and making sure that it is productive and producing things that your society needs in order to make loads and loads of money. I was going to say to survive, but like honestly, that's kind of like secondary as long as you're profitable. For right now, I'm setting up the core basics of my power grid, and then we're going to jump on into the research menu. Research in this game is divided up into three categories. There's fundamentals, which give you new buildings that make you more efficient and make most of your little units function better. We've got engineering, which is where we're going to be getting into process processing and producing things and conveyor belts and all that kind of stuff. We've got the social menu. The social menu is largely going to be really sir. I am talking to the audience right now. The game is fully voiced uh, in both the sandbox mode and in the storyline mode. In the storyline mode, you're rebuilding after a moon disaster. In the sandbox mode, we're just playing in the dirt. But the social menu, this is where you're going to be dealing with stuff that has to do with your humans and your policies and what they're allowed to do and laws and things of that nature. For right now, though, I'm building up a pylon. Everything has a limited amount of slots that it can run a power line to. This guy right here is a charging station for my little Joni the Dronies. These are batteries. Uh, you can see it filling up on this side. These are my solar panels right here, which are absorbing from the sun. You do have a daytime and a nighttime phase in this game. We just came out at nighttime at the beginning of the game, and I think the moon or whatever planet we're on right now, it takes like multiple days before it's all over. The rotation takes a little while, and so we're going to fill up our batteries, and then hopefully we'll have enough so that we can make it out the other end and have enough power to keep our industries running, hopefully. 
Uh, now that we've got the basics set up on the surface and we know that our drones aren't going to die from running out of charge, which would be really, really bad, let's go down beneath the surface. We'll let the clock run, and there's some things that we need to build down inside of here. I don't have a research selected. We need to get the regolith presser. That's going to take one day to knock on out, and since there's not really anything else for us to build, I'm just going to wait for that to get done. And once the regolith presser is done, which it is right now, we're going to need some other things in order to get our job done as well. At the beginning of the game, you start out with a pretty serious deficit on stuff. If you build too much, be careful if you end up purchasing this game. If you build too much in the beginning, if you're like a big prepper like I am, I tend to overbuild power stations and stuff like that. In every video game known to man, I just I build way too many power stations. Uh, you will run out of stuff. Luckily, you can break things down and get the resources back to kind of like reconfigure uh, what it is that you're trying to do down here. But in the subsurface, our drones right now, they're only set up for courier, like currying, I guess, or being couriers. They move stuff around the base. We need a conversion module over here, which will re-outfit them and make them into drones that are capable of mining and doing other things. And you can see them bringing all the resources down to stack those on up. The other thing that we're going to need is we need a pressing module. This pressing module right here, its job is to convert just random soil into smart bricks. I don't know the difference between a smart brick and just like a normal analog brick, but they're specifically called smart bricks or smart concrete. So I figure it matters in one way or another. We'll set that up right there and we'll get them going. This guy's not connected to power. This only has 10 connections, so we want to be careful about the way that we set this up. I'm going to go ahead and put a power station right there. And then I'm going to run the wires over here preemptively, and we'll put that right there. And so now we should be all good to go. It looks like our batteries are filling up. We're going to want that to be filled up pretty high before we get too far into the game. And now that we have our pressing module, and we also have our drone module that's going to convert people into drones, as soon as this little power terminal right here gets done, this little power pole gets done, uh, we can go ahead and convert five of our drones into digging drones. They'll go inside. Everything in the game is animated really, really well. I've been really happy with the way the player gets to interact with the various buildings. They have little storage areas that will stack up the materials that they're creating. Uh, these things have different animations from the normal carrying drones, and they have a different model uh, that's very nice to look at if you watch them work. Now that we've got that finished off, we need to have regolith, and it needs to be put into here to make smart concrete. I'm not going to go wild wild and crazy right now with the conveyor belts because I don't think it's necessary, but we will hollow out this little area right here while we wait for other things to get done. And what you'll see is that our drones are going to spring into action. They're going to start destroying these little voxels, and you'll see that the carrying drones are going to start putting the regolith inside of this factory so that we now start getting bricks. There's also connectors on both ends that are going to allow you to put in conveyor belts that will also go to storages and splitters and razors and all kinds of stuff like that. So if you're into project games like Factorio, most of those little things seem to be in here and getting the job done. We now have the smelting furnace and we have moved on to creating the Geo Physical Prospecting, which is a scanner that allows us to scan the walls so that we can focus our efforts a little bit more effectively when we're trying to find things. We're going to get the conveyor belts off of there, and we're going to get underground mining, we're going to get the regolith refinery, and then we'll get conveyor belts. Because for right now, I'm not too worried about the logistics of how everything gets from point A to point B. I am simply in a phase right now where I'm trying to produce the stuff that I need in order to get my industry off the ground so that we can start taking corporate and civilian contracts to supply things, make money, and then work our way towards planetary colonization. I don't know if these guys can go up to the surface in order to recharge themselves, so it may not be the worst idea either to give them a closer charging station that they can interact with. I'll probably put it over here by the drone hub, and then we'll slap in another utility pole right here, uh, because I think this guy has one connection left, and so we'll split that into a four. And then from over here, we'll go to there, just so my mining drones can also kind of re-equip themselves as necessary. Because if they die, I don't think I have a way to replace them as of right now, so that would be somewhat catastrophic. Our researches are now done, and they've been mashed out, so it's time for us to get a little bit busy. Uh, one of the things that we are going to need aggressively... Are they done mining over there? I'm really just clearing out space right now so that we have places to build. So we'll go ahead and round that out. We'll have that connect on over to there. It's very satisfying, by the way, 
clicking and dragging all these little mining zones. I've been enjoying it very much, trying to get it all lined up sexy and spicy. We'll take something out of that wall right there, too. And we'll just let them run for a minute. It is plausible that we're going to need another battery, but it won't be charged because our batteries have an output rate right now. We have a little bit of a problem on our hands where none of our chargers are actively being utilized. So we're going to power this guy down to free up some power and at least get the charging stations back online so we don't end up with a big gaggle of busted drones uh, that can't work through the night. We also have an ore scanner right here. This thing is going to allow us to do deep scans to figure out exactly where useful things might be at down here in the soil. I think our electricity should be fine, so I'm just going to kind of lightly scan out that way. And it looks like we found iron and we found titanium. Chances are I'm probably going to reconfigure the layout of all these buildings once we figure out where the resources are at. But this is very, very resource intensive scanning like that, so be careful about it because you can see how much it drained our battery. And we do need to make it through the lunar night, which is going to be... A couple of days long. It's going to be a while before we see the sunlight again, so I'll get back with you once we get there. So after a considerable chunk of mining, I've got us a little operational area all nice and cleared out. And the ultimate goal was to get after this iron. A little feature that I think a lot of people are going to miss when they play this game is that if you go into the drill mode... Uh, you can manual mine this stuff. So if you get yourself into a tough spot where you don't have enough resources to set up an actual automated miner on these things, you can assign your mining drones to do it, and they'll just sit there and mine away at the soil. That's not what we're going to do. Once we've got this area cleared on out, uh, we're actually going to set up automated processes over here to make it work. But for the moment, I think it's not a bad idea. How many connections does that have left? It has another connection left. I might set up a separate split. I might set up another couple batteries so that our discharge rate is better at night. I think that might be a really good idea because our discharge rate is not keeping up with what we have going on inside the base. But I need to be careful about my iron supplies because we are getting very low and each of these is taking one iron. It means I could probably slap in two more. Uh, but we need to get a higher discharge rate for our electricity. Our generation is perfectly fine, but our discharge rate is bad right now. And it's causing problems in the dead of night. And so we'll just wire these guys back on into the grid. We'll daisy chain it a little bit. And that right there, that's a beautiful looking daisy chain that will more than likely have no consequences whatsoever. We're also going to need several more power poles that are not showing their radius right now. There we go. Connect a power pole over to there. And then we're gonna need to run power poles all the way down here to get to like our fundamental work area. And now that those power poles are done, we can actually get to like some serious mining. And so what we actively need for right now is we need a regolith extractor. Uh, the regolith extractor, this is basically gonna automate the process of what we're trying to do right here. Uh, I'll probably have it faced that way. I suppose once they clear all this stuff out, we'll figure it out a little bit better. But that right there is going to be the big project of the day that we kind of want to get done so that we're producing some iron. And then also so we're feeding it into a smelter, which is going to give us this number right here is going to bounce back a little bit harder. And so I think uh, we need to repair that. All right, repair that and turn it back online too. Uh, your buildings do degrade in this game. You do get automated features that allow you to repair them more quickly. Stuff like that. And as you can see, uh, we are now pumping out Regolith. I'm going to assign a couple of these drones to hand mine off of this guy. Uh, just to get it done for right now. Because I think we are going to have a very real shortage in the amount of steel that we have available for our building projects. And so this is going to be more efficient pretty soon. But for right now, I specifically just need this to start spitting out steel for my building projects. I don't know how effective we're going to be at producing it, but we're going to give it a go. It looks like our power outflow is still not where we want it to be at for right now. And so we're going to have to get on top of that as well, I think. Oh, no, never mind. It's working now. There it goes. Hey, we have steel coming on in. You love to see it. We've got a couple things I need to scan over here too, but we have a little bit of a power problem till the sun comes back up. In the meantime, let's give ourselves another couple solar panels just to make us a little bit more effective during the daytime at filling up this battery. I might be overdoing it here. Like I said, I'm a chronic overbuilder when it comes to power infrastructure in games. I just 
can't help myself. I can't stop myself from doing it, and I'm probably doing it again right now, but oh well. So at this point, ideally, what we would like to do is we would like to automate this entire process. So we've got a regolith extractor down here. I don't know what alignment I want it on. We may not have that many options, but we got to shoot the gap over here, I think. And I'm trying to see if that line right there dodges the power pole or not. So that one's going to hit the power pole. We need to come around a little bit, like right here, so that we're right next to it. Okay, put that bad boy in real fast. Our batteries are almost charged for the day anyways. I also would like, nice and early, I don't know how much this is going to cost me, but scan those two right there and tell me what they are, because I don't actually know what they are. So that's titanium right there, and we've got silica right there. All right, sounds like a planarinos. This guy's not hooked to the power grid just yet. Let us oblige him a little bit of energy. And now this guy is going to pull out raw regolith over here, which is like a baseline material. And what we need to do is we need to convert the raw regolith into iron ore that goes into this place so that my little drones that are carrying, they don't have to deal with all that nonsense. And so we've got a regolith refinery right here that will probably get that job done okay. I don't know if that's a straight shot on the conveyor front, but we'll go like so, get them turned around, and we should be all right right here. Let's go back to our conveyor belt menu. And we're just going to have that connect right there. That conveyor is looking good. And then we need another conveyor that goes on into here. Without blocking, by the way, BT dubs, without blocking that lithium post, preferably anyways. So we'll get a little kick turn in there. Put that bad boy inside of there. Alex, Building feels all right. We're in a unique situation. There's no alternative to lunar production on Earth. And we've made excellent progress in restoring production. Even basic resources will go for extremely favorable prices. Right now, the ACIL company is requesting a batch of silicon to continue producing building materials. You can accept the contract at the control center. Okay, I don't have silicon set up yet, although I guess I can just reconvert this guy to do silicon if I need to. Uh, but no, I'll turn it down real fast. When you change your mind, don't forget that you need to obtain a license to access the bidding system to participate in the contract system and build a landing platform to send resources. This could be a great opportunity for our company. Just saying. Everything is voice acted really well. I've been enjoying the voice acting on just about everything in this game, but you can see how these little elements of like random events are going to pop up that are going to kind of make you pick and choose what you want to do with your in like with your industry and give you you know, consequences and repercussions and sort of bonuses and benefits and things like that. I really wish right-clicking closed all menus and did not open that radio menu. That's one thing that I keep bumping with is that in other games, i got to get used to slamming on escape here. So your production is going to be iron. There we go. And so this thing, what it's going to do is it's going to centrifuge all the iron out of there. And then the iron's going to go on into this guy, and it's going to produce our ingots, and we can have that feed into whatever requires ingots a little bit later on. For right now, all that we need is just a supply of steel. That's pretty much it, is we just need to be producing steel, otherwise bad things are going to happen. An interesting feature I noticed in the research is that you generate three different colors of points, and they go into your researches, but if you have a research going that's not using that color of points, it will automatically apply it to something further down inside of the queue. I like that very much, and I don't know that I've ever seen that inside of a game before. We're coming up on morning right now, and our industry is pumping along. At night, we're having problems with power distribution, and so they're kind of like off and on all night. But for right now, everything seems to be working out well for our steel production. The next thing we need to get up and running is more than likely going to be probably silica. That's the next thing that's kind of running out on us right now. So let's consider what we can do. We already have a silica vein that we found. So it is plausible that we could just bang out yet another chain right here very quickly to get silica going. 
Seems like an okay plan. If you look at the buildings, you can see the little steels that are stacking up on the sides, too. With the storage buildings, you can't see it because they're self-contained. It's just like a building that doesn't have, like, windows or anything else on it. But when they're inside these little processors, you can actively see it. And that's the kind of little detail that I love to see with a title like this. With what I have on hand right now, uh, we could go another Regolith extractor right here. This refinery can only produce one of the things that we're actively looking for for right now what is that powder that it says that it's producing over here it says it's producing some kind of powder or something like that hmm all right well let's do a regolith extractor over here i suppose and we'll kind of just nestle this guy in because we purposefully did this the way that we did it so that we could do that pretty easily. I don't know what power pole I want to run from just yet. Because these having maximum connections is definitely something that can become a little bit of a headache. Like you find yourself reconfiguring wires every now and again. What's striking me though with this game is that normally I do not like production line games uh, that have like conveyor belts and things. I am just not into them. And for whatever reason though this game is like actively working for me right now. Honestly, I think the best way to configure this, too, would be to scooch this guy forward. And then we have all of the regolith go into one container that can then split to the different refineries that we need. So we're going to spaghetti base this for a minute for right now. But this is not permanently what it's going to look like. Once we have a nice stack of resources, I'm going to reconfigure this entire chain to make it look a little bit nicer. And also make it a little bit more effective. Right now we're kind of like on poverty finances. So we're just making it work the best way that we possibly can. Uh, before we do anything else. We're going to squeeze this guy kind of close. We don't need like a long conveyor running here. If I just do that, will it direct feed? I wonder if it'll direct feed if I just put them adjacent to each other. It won't direct feed if it's adjacent, but it will let you squeeze in a conveyor belt right there. Which I'm totally cool with. Alright, this right here is going to be producing silicium oxide, I suppose. Get that going so that we have a little bit of it. What is that right there? Slag? Oh, we're going to have to dispose of our slag. All right, so we've also got byproduct that needs to be taken care of. The uh, mineralogical equivalent of bycatch. So that's going to be a little bit of a headache, but we'll, we'll make it work. It's going to be all right. And then right here, we're going to keep this nice and high and tight. We're going to have it output directly to there. And then also I need to get this guy on the power grid very quickly so that everything is looking spicy. And I, I like that we've got a very... I hate that menu, dude. That radio menu on the right click is the worst. I don't like radio menus at all, dude. I'm super anti-radio menu. I can't stand them. I don't like radio menus in anything, so it's not like this game's fault. But man, I am not a radio menu guy. And then this guy is going to need to spit out silica for us. And now we're producing all of the base elements that we require in order to be maximum strength effective. Which is way better than being like Baby Might All effective, dude. We got this thing covered. One downside I did find, though. Oh, never mind, it's working now. Okay, well that's good. Uh, I played the game for a couple of hours earlier, and for whatever reason there's a bug in here with... There it is. There's a bug in here with some of the events where it'll actually be in Cyrillic instead of English, even though you have English selected. So it must be very specific events on the map, but they will want to get that cleaned up prior to a finalized release. We do have a landing platform that's all ready to go, and so I think we should get that set up so that we actually have physical contact with the outside world. I think that'll make our lives a little bit easier and a little bit more manageable because when we have too many products, we can sell them. When we don't have enough products, you know what I mean? We can order them. I think it will make life a lot simpler. That's going to cost us 40 bricks, though, so we need to produce for a little while. I've had the bricks turned off because it was kind of maxed out. Look at our little packs of Grimace milkshake we got over there, dude. That's the good stuff. That's what fuels capitalism. Grimace milkshake. Back to the surface. We'll get the landing pad started on off. That is going to deplete us on resources a little bit. But I'm actively spitting out bricks right now anyways, so we should be all right. And we're looking pretty good on steel and silicon at the moment, too. And this doesn't take too much of that. It just takes a lot of bricks. And there they go. They're doing the magic drone dance of construction. And now we have a landing pad. Does it need to be powered? It does not need to be powered. That's good, because I was kind of loath 
to use up one of my connections on it. Uh, we do have contracts and things that may come in as time goes along, but we'll have to wait and see up until they arrive. We can get some scouts up inside of here. I just noticed in this little tab over here, I can go ahead and I can grab myself some other things. We can also buy some science points and things, which I think we're going to have to do. Always getting me with the in-game microtransactions. You can tell that this is run by a corporation. Uh, social science points will be good. Our funding's about to run out, so I'm going to have to decide what I want to do over here. But first things first, how much money do I have? I got 300 grand. Maybe I'll order a scout. Yeah, let's confirm the scout for right now, and we'll figure it out from there. Where's my little scout guy at? I want my little scout guy so I can go scout the soil and check out Mar, or I guess the moon. I've got a bunch of cargo pads over here that I added on in. My only complaint about the cargo pad is that it doesn't total the amount of things that are stored inside of here. It says it'll hold, it'll hold 64 of each, I guess. But it would be nice to have a meter over here that tells you how close to, like, totality full it might be at some point. It's kind of like a... It's not really like a complaint, just like an observation. Oh, my cargo pod's ready. Let me see my little autonomous drone guy here. Drop him. Don't squish my other drones, though, dude. We don't need any altitudin altitudinal drone-on-drone -drone violence going on right now. That's the thing? Oh, I thought the ship was attached to it. Okay. Oh, this dude's sick. All right, this guy's dope. So, like, can I just, like, send him off into the horizon? Is that, like, a thing he's capable of? Oh, we can get a sat. We can get, like, a flamethrower drone that goes and gets these surface nodes, too, dude. That'd be so sick. How do I recharge this guy? Do I need, like, a large recharger to recharge this guy? Uh-oh. I didn't even think about the fact that he was going to have a little battery pack on top of him, dude. Hopefully it's a good battery pack. Hopefully it's got some shelf life to it. Uh, can I send him out on an expedition? So we got a solar panel field, an unknown find. Yeah, send the scout rover over to check that out. Is he going now? There's a little icon on our base now, so I'm guessing he's going. How long does his battery last? Can he can he make that run? Oh, dude, look at him. He's hauling ass right there, dude. My man's putting a buck on the dash. I like to see it, bro. I like to see it. In the meantime, I also added a bunch of offload storages just so, like, whenever we get a contract that comes on through, uh, we are going to have things on hand that we can rapidly cycle on out and, like, ship just in case. It felt like it would be a really good idea to have that stuff on hand for when the next contract comes through so that we don't look like a big dummy the next time it happens because we had to, we couldn't take that last one yet because we didn't have, like, lithium set up or anything else like that. So hopefully we get a contract soon. I don't know. If it's just based on time or what. So it looks like his battery recharges. It's got a little solar panels on it. So if you were worried that our drone was just going to be marooned out here in the middle of nowhere. Uh, not the case. Not the case at all. Our little drone has solar panels on him. So he just recharges himself. That's really, really nice because I played Surviving Mars. And in Surviving Mars, you could actually lose a rover where it would just run out of power outside of like your logistical range. And it would just sit out there until 20 hours later you had built out far enough to go get it so that's really really good that logically the little guy has a little he has like a little solar panel on top of him like that seems like fairly standard equipment for like a moon exploration vehicle i want to see what's down here though i'm curious i'm gonna buy some points with our cash so that we now have research points coming in for social issues because I found out why we're not getting contracts. Uh, you got it. There we go. Uh, you got to have this little terminal thing. You got to have a business license, I guess. Even in space, you've got to like submit your business idea to like the city council, even though there's no city on the moon. The moon council, the moonanite council. We got to submit our business plan and like our zoning permits and everything else. You know, bureaucracy, bro bureaucracy your modules do seem to break very very frequently and it's like intensive for you to go down and you got to do multiple clicks in order to get that done i would like a button here that says like repair all and it just repairs all real fast for you 
Uh, the identified object turned out to be a module from an orbital station. The area around it is littered with thousands of small fragments, and the module itself is bent and twisted. Approaching closer and inspecting the debris, the cargo truck's cameras notice a partially faded inscription, Hope 2 RM5. Before the collapse, this was a research module on the Hope 2 station. Apparently, the station sustained such serious damage that the external module detached from the main structure. We can send a cargo truck with a drone for detailed examination. Nice. Okay, let's go back out to the surface, and we'll give this guy another little job over here that he can play around with. Uh, I would like for you to go over to here and check out the aerodynamics laboratory. Let's send him. He's already in the neighborhood, so that should be like a quick run. Uh, in the middle of the lunar plane stands a large cube-shaped research facility. Several cargo rovers are parked nearby. Around the building, several drones and a couple of people are bustling about, all of them busy dismantling the inside of the complex and storing the disassembled equipment in the truck. Soon, a communications request appears. Hello, Director. I represent Hemisco Corporation. How fortunate that you're here. We offer a partnership. Help us ship equipment from this facility to Earth through your base, and we will pay the expenses handsomely. We recently bought this facility from the FASM Corporation and want to transport all the laboratory equipment. Hopefully you can help. Okay. Yeah, sure. Sounds like a normal delivery order, but something seems off to me this time. Oh, I gotta send a cargo transport over there? I don't have a cargo transport. I haven't bought one of those yet. Soy pobre. In order to get one of those bad boys, it's gonna cost me 200 grand. And I'm sitting on like 270 grand, and I kinda need that money to go towards science points so that I am actively generating green points for right now, and pretty soon all the other points as well. We're getting a little trickle from our science vehicle, but not enough once our corporate sponsorship runs out. So unfortunately, we got the research done that allows us to access corporate contracts, but none of them have really been coming through during the time that I've been playing. And so I've got another research queued up that's going to hook us up to the entire global market so that we can just sell to anybody. I mean, they might be a warlord. They might be some random guy named Jeff that lives in the suburbs that just wants 2,000 tons of slag for unknown reasons. I guess we'll find out. Well, it looks like the market updated. We now have access to all this stuff. So let's see what they've got. It's going to have to be an aerial delivery. I don't really have the stuff to do anything other than an aerial delivery. I also need them to be fairly simple contracts that are not going to be that difficult to output because I just don't have my stuff set up yet. Uh, so we're looking at contracts to take bricks. Uh, we're looking at small contracts to deliver things like iron or steel. So I've gone through, and the vast majority of these seem to be very, very, very large bulk orders. So we are going to need to ramp up production like crazy to meet the needs of just about any of these. It's not really going to be avoidable. Like, we need to basically set up, like, full grids of things that are producing. So this is going to be a game of scale. All right. I had figured they would give me, like, a couple of gimme contracts where it's like, yeah, you know, send out, like, three silica and we'll be all good. Just, you know, send us a couple silicas. Oof, this is going to get micromanagey over here. I can tell. What's it going to take for me to get the automatic repair? Automates the repair of structures by drones if necessary resources are available. Okay, so it's queued up and it's moving along. The medium solar panel we can probably kick off. You keep your progress if you remove one of your researches. So don't stress about it that much. Apparently our drone made it. And the crater is a vast storage structure. Comprised of multiple segmented modules. Emergency vehicles are scattered around the area. A sign by the entrance identifies it as Reserve Warehouse 4517-2075, and a crust logo makes it clear who the owner is. This facility is designed for emergency use and has a large quantity of steel, smart concrete, and modular frames. And for 90 days, we're getting orange research as well. Nice, dude. That's what I like to see, especially since we're about to, like lose stuff too what are we not doing right now i'm not producing anything that's using orange points do i have anything around here that's got like orange points required only i doubt it we're kind of past that point of the game right now i do want that multi-regolith factory dude that thing would be sick to condense all of my random powders into one building and then it like refines them on out and can spit them in different directions that would be fantastic that'd be the good stuff right there 
I'm kind of wondering if I can convey more of this stuff over to this guy too, but I don't know how many connections I have left on my power grid. I got like a couple connections left on my power grid. We could maybe like spaghetti chain something together right here. I don't know if it'll actually let me split conveyor belts though. I guess we'll find out. Let's build the building first and then we'll find out if we need to wait till we get specific splitters or anything else. And so what I needed was a smelting furnace. Yeah, smelting furnace would be fantastic if we could squeeze it in around here somewhere. Might have to snake it around the corner over there too, but hey. Give me the smelting furnace and let's see if this works. I'm curious. Oh, look at that, dude. It does. It automatically gives you a splitter when you have a T-junction like that. Well, that's good. At least we can start stacking up some iron contracts. How's this guy doing over here? Oh, this is broken. That explains why nothing's working right now. Fair enough. Okay, let's get this bad boy done. And then we kind of want this just to, like... It's not going to be pretty, all right? But it is going to work. Oh, no, that's an outflow? Oh, we don't want an outflow. I, I wanted to go in. It's because of the direction that I drug and dragged it. All right, that's on me. That's on me. Uh, this guy right here. Salvage that. Salvage that real fast. We want it to be an input, not an output. There we go. Now we got it running magically. And this guy needs to go into the wiring grid. We'll just use this one right here. It's just easier that way. Hopefully the power outflow is good enough. And then we want this guy to be producing steel since we've already got that stacked up on both sides. So at this point, I thought it might be a good idea to cut on in and show you some mid-game gameplay. Because at the beginning of the video, I was going in more or less completely blind, having played the tutorial, but generally knowing where I was heading. And what I was trying to play around with, I wanted to show you my base about 17 hours later. And so this is what I'm working with right here. The game actually expands out pretty aggressively, and there's a lot of stuff going on. I had a group of colonists, but they all died of asphyxiation due to the oxygen system going out. But I have it all set up so that they can live inside of here. They're kind of slidey when they move around the map. In fact, I'll try to hire one right now so you can kind of see what that looks like let's see if there's a botanist on offer there's not a botanist on offer but we do have two engineers so i'm gonna hire both engineers real fast and put them into my cart and they should get dropped in a cargo pod in just a moment but i've been really really happy with this game i don't think i would have dumped around 20 hours on into the title if i hadn't been having a good time with it uh, all of your buildings, like, engineers can interact with them, and it makes them get way more efficiency and way more things going on. I've got most of the dots and tittles figured out. I'm going to save you the stress of going through what all this is. Just understand that this spaghetti chain mess over here is producing, like, everything known to man that you can see on this side. I haven't gotten to everything in the game entirely just yet, and to give you some idea of how deep the gameplay goes, uh, this is how far down the tech tree I am after after probably about 15 hours of playing the game. On the social, I'm right here. And on the fundamental, I'm over here. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that I wish I had known going into the beginning of the video that I was filming that I know now that I'm much better at. But basically, don't skip the first quest that corporate gives you. It gives you a chain of gimme quests that keeps your research up and running and it keeps your cash flow going as well. And it has no time limit. I didn't take it earlier on in the video because I was worried it would have a time limit and I would fail it. Uh, you're not going to. On this separate playthrough that I started out with, I went with that chain and just said, damn the torpedoes, I don't care about the consequences. And it turns into a quest chain that actually gives you a bunch of research and a bunch of money to play around with at the beginning of the game. And we skipped it in the YouTube video. But by and large, I've been really, really happy with this game. I thought that I did not like factory games until I played this game. And I think the inclusion of sort of like low sci-fi exploration and points of interest. I mean, I have craft out here now that can mine out on the moon. 
I have cargo trucks, I have scout vehicles. You can always use these to go and get other things that you might want around or things that will add on to your stockpiles. As far as things to do inside of the game, it keeps your brain stimulated. Like in between solving sort of like engineering problems, like how do I get object from point A to point B, you've got contracts over here and I rescind my earlier observation that they needed e easier contracts at the beginning of the game. You don't. When you unlock the free market over here, you can actually sell stuff. Just part and parcel out of here, which will give you a little bit of money. It's not going to help you out on the research front, but it will allow you to keep yourself stocked with a bunch of cash, which I wish I had known going on into the game. But I'm manufacturing all kinds of things right now that are worth like mad ducats worth of cash. The game is in early access, so the entire game hasn't actually been completed just yet. There are a number of factions that have showed up. Everything from rogue AIs that have sort of stitched together uh, various satellites and things of that nature. And there's humanitarian organizations, there's people that want to preserve the oceans, there are evil corporations that are clearly up to no good. Uh, you can see them all kind of listed inside of here with all of the jobs and the deliveries that you can do. My reputation is going up with most of them, and I've been making money around the clock. But I'm interested in seeing the way that these factions are going to interact with one another, because in their descriptions, a lot of them seem to have very different goals to what they're trying to accomplish in the universe. My favorite is Argos, which is effectively like an AI that runs a bunch of research stations and satellites out here. Some really interesting narrative ideas that they could play around with with Argos that I'm interested in seeing, but I've been playing the game non-stop and I've been having a great time with it. It's pretty rare that a game grips me enough to get me to play the amount that I have actively played this title. And it's been a great time. I've really, really liked it. I haven't run into any major bug. Okay, I take that back. I have run into kind of like a weird bug. Uh, I've run into sort of like weird, strange things along the way. But they mostly have to do with Steam Cloud saves. I don't really know how to explain it other than that. So in my house, I have two computers. I have one in the living room that I use to play games and get ready for videos that I'm going to be filming. But I'll still be in the living room with my wife so that we can spend time together and we can chat and we can hang out. And then I have a computer here in the dungeon, which I'm doing right now at this is what I'm recording on at the moment which is kind of like my workstation a weird thing that happens from time to time with this game is that if you load a save on a different computer than the one that you made the save on interior buildings like this little colony building over here everything will stop functioning and I'll have to break it all down and rebuild it all uh, it takes like five minutes but it is one of the first major annoyances that I ran into inside of the game and so that's one thing that I ran into it may be fixed in the release version of the game it's important to know uh, look at the version number right here I recorded the previous video on the media branch which has a bunch of fixes and stuff and then sort of like Addle-brained, I made my new playthrough for 20 hours later, forgetting to swap over to the media branch. I'm just on the beta testing branch right now, and the two do have different version numbers. So it's possible that it's fixed on that other branch, but I can't merge them at this point. It's too late, and I'm too far into the game, so I just had to make do with the footage that I actively have for right now. Uh, I've also had like some weirdness with drones and little bots going to grab things from locations that are further away than closer supply depots of those things, but you seem to be able to fix it by making this one prioritized. But you would think with the nav mesh calculations, they would just go for whatever is closer. But that hasn't been the way that it played out so far, and it happens from time to time. I had to rebuild my entire power grid due to that save issue on Steam Cloud, so hopefully that get, gets fixed before the finalized version. But by and large, this game really, really surprised me. I came in expecting to not like it because I don't really like factory conveyor belt games. But this one had just enough of those Ixion style elements to it with kind of random events and narrative events and storyline events and corporate events and things like that and like planetary exploration to go along and give meaning to the things that you're farming that it really, really worked for me. This is a rad game. It's got a great soundtrack. It's got really, really good production values. 98% of everything in it seems to be working great for an early access release. And now that I've said that, I'm sure that this game will release to a resounding 60% review score and then I'll look like a fool because that's what always happens. But those are the things that I ran into during my 20 hours. Other than that, everything has been working perfectly fine and I've been having a great time with the game. Um, I don't know if the portraits and things that they use for corporations or AI art 
If they are, I do recommend that they replace those with actual handmade art, and hopefully they're just placeholders. But since we're going into early access, and I'm not an artist, so I don't know how I de how to identify that stuff, and it's become so ubiquitous that I've really begun having a hard time telling the difference between AI art and real art. The technology is moving very, very quickly, and so I honestly have no clue. Uh, they look sort of AI-ish to me, but I could be way off base there because once again I'm not an artist uh, I struggle to draw stick figures and now that everything I can't see their hands which is the only way that I could figure out before uh, whether or not something was AI art uh, it's very very difficult to tell but this is the crust uh, it's absolutely eating up my entire life right now it's one of those games that I can't stop obsessively playing I think it's really cool. I'm having a great time with it, working on my production chains and having all kinds of conveyor belts that go all over the place that produce a million bajillion different things that I am then selling on the galactic market to make money. Uh, really, really fun game. For They actually managed to merge some things together to make me like a genre that I normally am really, really against, and the values and production of the game all seem to be really great. Uh, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, it was the crust. Tomorrow it'll be something else. Thanks for sharing your time with me, and that's about all I've got for you. Bye, folks.